it's a reminder that if you really want to connect with somebody, if you put in the work, you can absolutely do it. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel and to this series where I dissect TLC's Love and Translation, a multicultural dating show where no one speaks the same language yet everyone hopes to fall in love. I'll admit, I was a bit heated in last week's video and I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> Today's topic though actually puts a smile on my face. We are going to be talking about Khalil and Khalil is an absolute gem y'all. My diamond. We are going to be breaking down why everything he does works so well. Let's get into it. Khalil is from Waco, Texas. He's 24 years old and he's one of the three male competitors on this show. Previously, he played football at a Division I college. He had aspirations of becoming a professional football player, but he suffered an injury which set him back and he was never able to recover from it. I was always practicing or always traveling for games, so I never really had time for a meaningful relationship. I think Khalil has several advantages even with his lack of dating experience. He didn't really date as a teen or a young adult. He's likely not as jaded as somebody who actively dated from a very young age. He's probably had the opportunity to observe relationships both successful and unsuccessful and has a good idea of what it is that he wants in his future relationship and that's good it sheds a little bit more light on to why he was so intentional about getting to know the women that he liked in the beginning so point Khalil I shared in a previous video that Khalil's father is a black Jamaican, his mother is Trinidadian, Chinese, and white. We can assume that his worldview is much broader than somebody that was brought up in a monocultural or monoracial household because of his family's diverse backgrounds. Differences probably feel more natural or acceptable to him in comparison to somebody of a single race, and that probably will lead to him being more open-minded and more welcoming of his partner's cultural background traditions, what have you. Let's analyze Khalil's behavior once he gets to the house. It's clear from previous comments that he made that he knew there was going to be a multicultural component to this show. However, when he shows up at the villa and realizes that the women do not speak any English, he's thrown for a bit of a loop. Now that is. Do what? Despite his initial surprise, Khalil quickly adapts to the language barrier, which I think demonstrates a high level of composure and resourcefulness on his part. Something I found really fascinating when I went back and looked at the footage from episode one, there is a frame where both Khalil and Trip are standing next to each other. And you see Khalil kind of off to the side talking to Jin who's from South Korea. Body language, I, I, I know you can't understand me. I found it really cool that these two dynamics were happening right next to each other and that one of them was just so open and friendly while the other one was really having a rough time. A little bit later in the evenings when the singles have to complete the two minute gaze challenge, we get to see a bit of Khalil's kindness show through. When he sits across from Aidy, who is from Japan, he notices that she's uncomfortable and he really tries to reassure her that everything is okay. It wasn't too bad. It's okay. <laughs> in his solo interview, he mentioned that he is very shy. He probably has a lot of compassion for the women and how awkward it must feel to be in this situation. He tries to soften the discomfort with some silly faces and smiles. He is much more expressive than both Dylan and Trip combined, which I think does him nothing but favors. It took me watching the first episode back about eight times for me to finally realize that Khalil was the one who actually determined why Imani was so upset. Vous? Cette chambre. Why do oh, we have our own room? Why do we have our own room? That should have been my heads up that he was really tuned into everybody's body language and that he really tries to not only be understood, but understand the other person. Khalil's interactions with the women feel so smooth and he's got this natural charisma. I went into the details of his date with Jennifer in our second video. If you haven't watched that, do because it's going to give you a lot of context for what I'm about to say. His body language was great there, even though he was doing too much in his line of questioning. By the time he connects with Idy though, it seems like he has learned his lesson. Maybe because she's shy and she's more his speed, there's not that much intensity or pressure behind his questions. Either way, they really do make a sweet connection by episode three. 
Y'all, I'm so excited to talk about episode four. It, like off the charts excited. It was so good for them. Not for everybody, but for them, yeah. <laughs> it's unclear whether the contestants had planned dates or if they chose the activity that they wanted to do, but every couple did something unique. Khalil and Idy's date was dinner with a twist. They go into town to a Dominican market to purchase the ingredients that they need for their meal. It's a low stakes, really active date with lots to see and talk about, including the butchering of a chicken. <laughs> they use the appropriate hand gestures as well as humor throughout their interactions. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. But it's light and super fun to watch. My <laughs> cheeks hurt from smiling so much. Girl, my cheeks hurt too. After Khalil and Idy have prepared their dinner, they take everything down to the beach and they prepare their table picnic style. I actually was contemplating whether or not production could have slipped the two of them some rogue translators or fed them lines the way they understand each other blows my mind. Khalil is an anime fan. He knows some basic Japanese as well as some Spanish words. Airi seems to know some English as well as a little bit of Spanish. There's this really cool exchange where they are speaking to each other in these three separate languages kind of woven together, mostly on Khalil's side. But they understand each other so well. This is great. <laughs> Nihongo? English. Yeah. Habe? Oh, barrier. Watashi wa mm, beer? They are wonderful. I love how much active listening is going on between the two of them and how Khalil even mimics Aidi's intonation to let her know that he's understanding her. He even mirrors her body language at times, which would let her know that they're on the same page as they're both talking. They are a whole case study. It's so inspiring to see the two of them interact with each other because it's a reminder that if you really want to connect with somebody who's worlds apart from you, if you put in the work, you can absolutely do it. Kudos, fantastic job to the two of them. A round of applause, 10 out of 10. This was great. During the date, Khalil and I reach an agreement. He wants to get to know the other women in the house, but he sees Aidy as his primary person of interest. Chicas, and you, hey, for now. Yeah, right now, yeah. I'm really happy that he was honest from the get-go because that kind of honesty pays off down the line and establishes this foundation of credibility between the two of you, which you absolutely need in any relationship but even more so when you struggle with being able to communicate verbally. It's something that Dylan does not do a good job of and we will go into depth on in the next video. If you're looking for a masterclass in intercultural dating, look no further than Khalil. All of the qualities you need to be a successful intercultural dater are right here. The crazy thing to me is that he doesn't even seem to know how powerful he is. I'm about to meet these girls from around the world. My entire life will change. If he keeps that same energy with all of the women throughout this experience, it will indeed change his life. Let me know what you think of Khalil in the comments down below. I really thoroughly enjoyed this segment between him and Aidy, even though the episode itself was kind of a hot mess expressed by the end. I'll tell you all about it next week. As we always say on our channel, remember that with God, all things are possible, and I will see you next week. Take care.